So um, thank you, Councilwoman, again, for uh, putting this meeting together uh, so that we can talk about this iconic building, the town hall that if uh, any are from around Germantown Avenue, or either from Germantown Avenue or from around the Germantown area, especially during the Battle of Germantown ceremonies that they have uh, throughout the years, you would know about this particular building and, and also this historical quarter uh, that is there. Uh, and so, um, and so we're happy to um, uh, talk about uh, the feasibility study that we're trying to do and that we've been asked uh, 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 by PIDC uh, to conduct this because we, as a development company, uh, what about the development has expressed interest uh, in putting together a team to look to develop this project. Um, but before I start, uh, Frank Kuhn, I just wanted him just to read a couple of excerpts of what we have been um, commissioned by PIDC to follow uh, 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 these um, uh, these terms by PIDC in order to do a feasibility uh, study and then to turn that information over to them and to see if we would be selected to move forward. Kweku, uh, would you mind just reading some of those excerpts from our mandate from um, PIDC? Yes, sure. Hi, Anthony. Um, um, good evening, everybody. So I think just kind of follow up from what a council councilwoman has said earlier about PIDC being a selecting um, city agency, I wanted to kind of go through the items that they wanted us to kind of talk about um, in terms of the feasibility studies that we're working on. So the very first item is they wanted us to do a building assessment. In other words, kind of go inside and the outside of the building and really um, be able to put together a report about the current condition of the building. So that was the very first item. The second item was they wanted us to do a commercial corridor market assessment on Germantown Avenue, just to make sure that if uh, this project were to become viable, that there will be a potential a commercial component and that the corridor will be able to support that. The next item was they wanted us to do a historic assessment um, since it's a historic um, um, building to make sure that um, we, we, know, we meet whatever happens in the building meets all the historic um, credentials and assessment that has already been laid out. They also wanted us to do an environmental and site and engineering assessment of the current building um, to see if you know, it is even viable to do anything in the building. And then finally, they want us to also have community meetings, which the councilwoman um, office gracefully um, has been hosting, this being our second one. So those are the outcomes that PIDC has mandated us to kind of work on and then present back to PIDC, you know, for them to kind of come up with the next steps and uh, be the selection process. So that's where we are. Thank you. Thank you, Quaker. I really appreciate that. And so, th and so, and so, this is what you see uh, uh, our team doing. Uh, it's not only West Powelton. We are only a part of this process. We have uh, um, a whole uh, host of team uh, that we work with uh, in order for us to get to the, a point to uh, present our whole feasibility study package. Uh, to PIDC to see if we would even qualify or even if we would be selected as a developer to move forward within uh, um, this process. So the city is doing is 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 due diligence and and as a vetting uh, process in order for us to even move forward uh, um, to the next steps or even be selected to move forward to the next steps. So uh, so this is one of our uh, deliverables is to reach out to the community and to uh, uh, and and to um, 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 ask questions of the community as which you uh, have done. We got a host of questions, uh, very good questions that you have posed to us for us to answer, and we will do so uh, um, 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 later on uh, in this presentation. Uh, and then also just a little bit about me. Uh, again, my name is Anthony Fillard. I'm born and raised in Philadelphia. 
I've uh, been in uh, the 8th District, the 22nd, 14th Division uh, um, uh, for over 30 plus years, raised uh, five daughters at 203 East Clydeland Street. Uh, and, um, and, and I uh, uh, have been in the construction industry for over 35 years, started as a union iron worker and have uh, uh, parlayed uh, that into a steel company and then also into a development company as well. Uh, and so uh, I've been doing uh, uh, um, construction, new construction, foundation construction, erection construction of buildings and bridges and things of like that up and down the East Coast. Uh, and, um, and now uh, my focus is to come into uh, uh, our communities, uh, especially African-American and black and brown communities and to help to build new construction, new housing uh, uh, um, income mixed housing, meaning affordable and mixed and also market rate housing into our community to build uh, uh, um, homes that people will have stake in the community for 30 plus years, but also be a part of the renaissance that is happening in our communities and that are making our communities more attractive, that people would want this to be the destination for them to raise their families and to and, and to help our communities to be more viable um, communities and also safe communities that people would want to live. So with so with all that said, and then I have a team, as you heard from Kwaku, uh, we have uh, 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 Cicada, uh, who is an architectural firm, who has been a tremendous job uh, uh, of, of laying out some really just plain renderings of what you know, of, of, of what we think it could be, but it's open to have more people to, you know, uh, uh, add more suggestions of what uh, could happen here at, uh, at, at the town hall historical building. And then also uh, uh, something that we are trying to do in the back of, of the town hall, but the town hall will, that is our main focus of that historical structure first. Uh, and then uh, uh, you will, uh, can also uh, hear from our realtor uh, if you have any questions as it relates to uh, uh, the real estate, and that is Carlos, uh, Carlos uh, Missat. And then we uh, also, um, uh, um, you know, have some of our own team and investors are also uh, on the line as well, but only just uh, uh, as as a, as a support mechanism. But we do have investors that are interested and has already put up money for us to even do this market uh, analysis to see uh, if, if this is a viable project. So with, so with that said, I'm gonna turn this over to our architect and let him start off, Darren, with your presentation. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Darren Edwards. I'm one of the principals at Cicada Architecture and Planning. Uh, and I also have Nana Bani on the call with me. She's our project architect on this um, and uh, I am just going to go through and I just want to make it very clear that these are very conceptual plans of what we've uh, looked at to, uh, to put in both the, uh, the existing town hall uh, building as well as the, uh, the lot and back of the building. So. so um, so what you can see here, oh, sorry, let me start on the first floor. Uh, so to the left is Germantown Avenue, to the north is uh, Haines Street, uh, and I should say that uh, at the top of the page, uh, north is actually down here. But uh, uh, most of you are aware of the, uh, 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 the dome structure kind of at the uh, at the front of the building uh, and what we propose to uh, do there uh, is a two-story uh, uh, event space uh, and then surrounding it is uh, the the back of house support spaces for it um, and then in the rest of the building on the first floor uh, there is proposed uh, uh, commercial spaces uh, and then what we're proposing on the back half of the site uh, is a uh, residential apartment building. Uh, it will be uh, uh, one bedroom units. Uh, there's a lobby here off of the, uh, the Heme Street side. Uh, 
Um, so that's the ground floor floor, the first floor plan. Uh, and then moving up through the building, um, and we have the two-story vent space uh, in the front with some, uh, uh, again, back of house spaces in the back. Uh, and then we're proposing uh, a series of uh, short-term rental, uh, 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 residential rental uh, here on the, uh, the second floor. Um, there's a lot of history, obviously, in this uh, area. And the hope is that um, people would uh, like to stay here instead of uh, staying downtown. Um, and then in uh, the, the back of the, the site, we have, uh, uh, again, a series of uh, uh, one, one bedroom uh, rental, uh, long-term rental units. Um, and then uh, the third floor, moving up through the building, um, this is an all residential floor. So in the existing building, we have uh, one bedroom uh, uh, long-term lease uh, rental units, uh, as well as in uh, the new addition in the back. Um, and then the idea is that the, uh, the roof of the structure uh, could be a, uh, uh, an outdoor uh, uh, event space um, uh, for the, uh, the venue uh, and then an outdoor uh, green space for the residential units uh, in the back. Um, so with that, I will uh, turn it back to Anthony. Yes, okay. So um, uh, uh, as we said that, you know, it's really open of what we think, you know, uh, that we can uh, do in the 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 existing structure uh, and to uh, uh, include a lot of, of input from the community of what they would like to see. As you heard Darren talk about event space, first, second uh, floor around the rotunda uh, and and um, and also office space there as well on the first floor and some on the second floor. And our proposal is to also, uh, 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 we have a vision, first of all, that there's a bell tower there as well that we want to keep intact and that we want that to be a part of the historical renovation of the bell tower. We have been in and out of this building many of times. The bell is still there and we want to try to rehab and, and, and then bring that bell back to operation and then have it as a tourist attraction as well. And people can go up to the bell tower and see it because it's, uh, 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 you know, dates back into uh, probably the early 1900s or either even the 1800s um, as well. But, but, uh, but the structure there uh, is still intact and you still can actually go up to the bell tower stairs and to see the bell. Uh, so we want to make that a part of a tourist attraction as well, but we also want to make the building itself a, uh, a, a tourist attraction as you go inside this building, as it is refurbished, uh, uh, you will see a lot of the interior is still intact. The tile and all of the things that are on uh, the rotunda's wall is still intact, and we want to uh, be able to bring that back and then again make it open to the public, open to tourists that wants to look at Germantown's rich historical history there. But at the same time, be able to open up office space uh, to, uh, uh, to many uh, of, of our entrepreneurs and many of our local businesses that want to operate in Germantown and we want to uh, create them a home, create vendors. And then, and then as we, and then also to, you know, have a Airbnb uh, option for people and then also a long uh, term residence for those as well. Uh, um, and then we also, uh, as you moved up to the roof, as Darren has sh sh shown that green space there, uh, we want to make it even uh, a opportunity for either a uh, either a pop-up uh, um, catering event on the green roof or even 
uh, we could probably try to attract one of our local restaurants that might want to make that a part of their venue uh, as well uh, and to take advantage of that roof uh, accessibility and then to look at over uh, uh, the view of Germantown Avenue from that point there of, of, of view. Uh, and it's a very, very beautiful view and we believe that it can uh, really enhance any restaurant that would probably want to operate there. Um, and so, and so that's just, you know, part of our vision. And then also even down in the basement area, the lower area, there is also a couple of other rooms and space uh, that again, we could uh, uh, look to have uh, community uh, uh, space there for community meetings and also event space for the community that might want to you know have a a uh, some type of event party or uh, or or function there um that is you know uh close in the proximity of their neighborhoods or either their uh, uh nonprofit. so uh, so, so, so we're looking to, you know, you know, have this as a mixed use structure is what our vision is. And then also uh, for the second phase to see uh, of a newer structure that will not touch the historical structure. It will be, uh, it will be off set maybe about, you know, four or five feet where you cannot touch the historical structure if you are looking to build a new structure. And that's something that, you know, we would propose in phase two to help to deal uh, uh, um, uh, with the uh, ongoing financial support for the historical structure as well. Uh, and so, and so that's, uh, uh, that's our quick vision that we have right now. Uh, now there was a number of questions Councilwoman, I'm going to go back to you. Uh, how would you like uh, for me to uh, answer these questions? Do, do you want me to read them and then answer them? Or do you want to, uh, or, or would you like to read them to sure. me and then I can answer them from there? You know, I was just going to read them to you. And um, I know, because I know some of them we've condensed. So mm -hmm. why don't I just read them to you and we can go through them that way. Mm -hmm. Also, I do want to acknowledge that I know that um, some folks are having difficulty accessing mm -hmm. the meeting. Um, you know, we did, uh, you know, uh, do what we needed to do to make sure that we had the capacity through Zoom, but for some reason, um, they're not letting additional people in. So um, this meeting is being recorded and will be made available to anyone uh, who wants to see it at any time. So I just want to make sure that that's clear in the sake of transparency that this meeting will be um, uh, it is being recorded and will be made available. That recording will be made available. Um, and so let me go to the first question, uh, which is, have you or your company completed any new construction projects from the ground up? If so, what, where, and when? Okay, yes, we have. Uh, first of all, we have over 75 years regarding new construction uh, from the ground up. Uh, West Powell Development and also Columbus Construction and also Cicada uh, 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 have um, designed and built new structures uh, around the city. I mean, uh, uh, all of those firms have their own website. Again, that's Columbus uh, um, Construction, Cicada Architect, uh, uh, and also West Powelton development you can go to any one of those websites and see the uh, see the development that we have going West Powelton uh, me I can speak directly for my company we uh, prefer to do new construction uh, housing from the ground up we have 19 houses that we're building right now right off of Hoarder Street uh, we've uh, and, and we've built a number of projects uh, uh, in West Philadelphia the ground up as well new construction. And then again, as I said, uh, all of my uh, expertise as a uh, um, iron worker and, uh, and, and erector of structures from uh, 13th and Race, the hotel that I built uh, down there, I built the uh, Marriott head, uh, uh, head, um, head house on, um, right there on 12th and Market. I did all of the steel erection down there. I built uh, the dental school over at um, uh, University of Pennsylvania. 
uh, uh, school, uh, all new construction, five story, uh, five five story uh, structure that we built there, and then we also did the BRB two, uh, uh, but we did that in collaboration with a company called Grassy uh, um, Erection Fabrication and Erection. So uh, so so through my uh, young years of 35 plus, uh, 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 we've been involved in many new constructions of all different types of structures that I'm going to build, uh, bridges that I've also built and, and, and have been a part of. Uh, and then Cicada, uh, I mean, you just can go to their web website right now. We are involved into another development with them, a new construction uh, right now, four to five story building right there at, at 41st and Lancaster. Quay Koo is a part of that team as well. Columbus Construction, again, is building that structure uh, as well uh, as we get the final approvals uh, uh, from the community and also from the zoning board uh, as well. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. Okay, so we're going to keep moving to the to, through the questions. We have 22 questions. I want to make sure we get them all in. And then if, um, if need be, we can go back and uh, have a discussion. So uh, comment if, uh, you know, if there's something that you want to elaborate further on. Okay. Yep. Uh, the second question, what experience do you or your firm have with historic building rest restoration and preservation? Well, on again, uh, um, West Powhatan is, is one of the lead developers uh, uh, partners here. Uh, we uh, put uh, together a collage of, of different um companies that bring the expertise that is needed in order to do a development, all development uh, and also developers, uh, that's how they uh, build projects. They bring uh, different um, team players to uh, uh, their consortium in order to make this development happen. So again, Columbus Construction brings the expertise of historical restoration. They have done a number of, of, of historical restoration projects. We bring the engineering uh, uh, team together who is Keaton Hood, uh, who is a structural engineer who is, uh, who, who is right now uh, uh, ramping up to go inside and begin to uh, test the, the uh, structure and the viability of the building for the interior structure and also the exterior structure. We also uh, uh, have contracted with Eustis Engineering to also bring uh, additional engineering components that we need uh, uh, um, in order to uh, assess the building and to see, you know, uh, um, um, uh, what type of condition this building is in, and also again, Cicada as well uh, 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 brings uh, the other engineering partners and their expertise, and and I believe is uh, A and E. Just correct me if I'm wrong, um, Darren, but A and E is another uh, historical uh, uh, architectural uh, consultant that uh, that we bring uh, to give us the information. Uh, of, of, of how to restore and, and to go forward with the preservation of, of rehabbing this structure. And that's how we get it done. Thank you, Anthony. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question, who chose the developer? And what were the determining factors in choosing the developer? So I know there's been a lot of speculation about that. Um, you know, uh, I spoke in the beginning of this uh, meeting that PIDC, the Philadelphia Industrial Development Corporation, is the property owner and will be selecting the developer. But Anthony, I don't know if you want to speak to that, your involvement with them, your interaction with them, your conversations with them, anything you want to share regarding uh, working with them to uh, develop this project. Yes, uh, uh, we actually... Um uh, uh, there is no selection of a developer at this point. Uh, we had inquired uh, with uh, the um, uh, managing director's office about this building way back when, and then they gave us the steps of, uh, uh, um, of what we needed it to, excuse me, I got a little cold. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> they gave us the steps for this uh, 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 in order to go um, uh, 
uh, and what direction to go in, in order to um, inquire about how do we go about trying to um, uh, uh, do the development or be or, or be involved in this development or uh, it, um, uh, as it relates to our inquiries. Uh, and so as we pursued that inquiry, uh, PIDC gave us uh, uh, what the uh, steps and what the requirements were. And first and foremost, that there has to be a deposit of money that comes out of our pocket and out of our investors' pocket in order to even begin the process. Uh, and so we had to fill out an application and we had to first be approved. We had to have the proper insurance says in order to go in and out of the building. And then we had to agree to a timeline of coming up with a feasibility study and a market rate study uh, uh, of, of what we could come up with to propose for, 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 for them, uh, for us to even be considered uh, to go to the next step. So it's a process. It's not a, uh, it isn't a hand picked uh, uh, process. It is, you know, you have to go and you have to inquire and then, and then you have to do your due diligence to see, you know, if you want to go through those steps in order to, uh, um, uh, be considered, uh, to develop the building. Um, what is the overall funding structure for this project? Is it public funds, private funds, uh, will tax abatements be involved, et cetera? Um, to answer that question, I think uh, the funding structure has not been ascertained at this point, but yes, we would definitely be going after public funds. We uh, have private fund interests uh, that are waiting in the wings to see what are the fact findings and the feasibilities and the market studies uh, that, uh, that they are looking at some of the preliminary information right now to see if we can attract private funds and, and we would definitely be going to see if, if there's any tax abatement. And the only tax abatement uh, probably would be is could be the historical tax credits. And then also it could be uh, other state uh, credits that uh, that we possibly could get. Uh, but, of but, uh, but of course, all of that would have to shake out in the pro forma that we would have to put together. OK. Uh, what percentage? and number of residential units in this project will be designated as low-income housing. Not asking how many units are designated as affordable housing, which has a clear and specific definition. So I think the question here is exactly how many are going to be low-income. Well, uh, what we will say and what we are confident as is that we're bringing in a, uh, a partner uh, that will handle the affordable and low-income uh, um, vouchers uh, that uh, that that this um, partner handles uh, affordability and low income. They have a waiting list, and we was very happy that they wanted it to join up and also partner with us. And we uh, are happy to say that we probably can produce about fifty percent of affordable and low income uh, housing uh, if all goes well. And if we are selected, we are slating about fifty percent of that will be uh, um, targeted for affordable and low income. Okay. Um, what was the purchase price? But you, you I was no, going to say you have a purchase, but you want to address that. The question is what was the purchase price for the property? No, we don't, we don't have no purchase price yet. We just uh, had to put a deposit down that's uh, for what, from what we understand is, is refundable if we're not selected. Uh, but I mean, but you know, that just gives us the opportunity to go in and out of the building and to uh, 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 put the uh, put together our our plan uh, of what we would want to propose. But there's no purchase price uh, uh, from or to the city at this time. Okay. Um, will the police station be moving to accommodate the developers' plans? If so, to where? And what provisions are being made for the police vehicles if the station is not moving? Well, yeah, you know, th th that is a part of our talks. Uh, uh, there are uh, options that we're dealing with uh, with the police station. One of the options is to include the police station into our scheme of, 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 um, of the development scheme within the town hall 
if that's possible. Uh, our second plan is to work with the police station for uh, for relocation uh, uh, of the police station of a more better location and also larger location. And we would you know, be happy to assist and to work with them. Uh, and then the third option, you know, which is always, you know, the last is that the, you know, to work around the police station uh, with the development and with the police station re remaining in its uh, present location, which, you know, just doesn't seem feasible for them or for the development. Okay. The next question is, will the building include parking and green spaces for the tenants? Yes. Uh, the building, uh, if you're talking about, uh, well, let's talk about there's two phases. If, if, if we just go with phase one, phase one would be just the town hall um, uh, being uh, 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 rehabbed and, 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 and if we're able to do all of the things that we just preliminary laid out in front of you uh, in that, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, um, the vision that we sent um, in the presentation there, then the town hall by itself would, uh, we would just uh, have the parking as what you see where the uh, police and the, uh, uh, and the patrol cars uh, are, are parked at right now. Uh, where you see those, where, where, where you see the police parking at right now, that actually like three quarters or probably seven eighths of that lot is uh, about, um, you know, you know, that is the footprint of, of the town hall. The police just use it because, you know, the town hall, the town hall is not operating, but, but, but that parking lot belongs to the town hall space oh. there so we mm -hmm. would you know be utilizing that space if it's just a town hall now if, if we have the um, apartment building added uh we would look at uh probably doing a podium bill and a podium bill means that we would build that on a uh structural uh column uh and beam uh structure uh, where the building will sit on top of that and it will be like a little garage underneath that would give us even more adequate, uh, 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 more parking uh, um, for, the, uh, for for that space in order to accommodate uh, um, additional parking there as well. Uh, and then of course, if we were able to relocate the police building, then we could do even more uh, Parking, we I think that uh, Cicada had even um, did a uh, uh, quick uh, parking space count. If we did a podium build and if we was able to do the maximum uh, development, we could look at about 120 spaces there for parking. Okay. All right. Um, will the builders use non-toxic building materials, energy-saving heating, and electric? Uh, there, uh, there will be no toxic materials whatsoever uh, by law and by uh, the uh, materials that we are required to use it to build with. Uh, uh, and then we are looking to construct a, construct a energy star building, uh, which, 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 which is a energy efficient building, uh, um, uh, you know, via the HVACs and uh, um, electrical and plumbing uh, of, 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 of however we can conserve energy uh, so to keep uh, the cost to the end user down. Uh, we, mm -hmm. you know, we aren't trying to make uh, PICO and the gas company any more money than what they already have. <laughs> okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. What benefits, property tax abatements, et cetera, is the developer receiving from this deal? What benefits is the community receiving from this development? Well, at, uh, at this time, from our calculations that, uh, that we, we don't know what kind of abatements that we could uh, retrieve from, the, uh, from this type of bill. Uh, uh, and so, so I, I, don't, I don't have the answer to that. Uh, but the benefit uh, to the community will be, again, as you know, we are looking to ensure that there's event space, community space, 
virtual access to the community services without having to travel to the to, uh, to city hall is one of the components that we really want to bring that's one of the things that stuck out in our minds and, and then as we talked to some of our other supporters as they were talking to us about this building and some of the uh, earlier visions was to you know put something together that could be more of a virtual uh, um, um, uh, access to some of the services that our residents uh, in the in uh, in the northwest part of the city could utilize and don't always have to go downtown for some of the common services that they need to get or some of the common information that that uh, that that they need to get from city hall. Uh, it just doesn't make sense that we live in a technology world that people should be able to you know you know go you know pretty much walking distance to like a city hall or information center like the town hall could present for them to get their important information and don't have to go down and you know uh, 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 worry about parking and worrying about you know how to get to and from uh, uh, to their homes from city hall. So those are some of the features that we want to uh, work hard on in, 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 in making the town hall more of a community service location uh, to the residents. Okay. Um, the next question is, why does development of apartments precede the development of the town hall? Well, uh, the uh, town hall um you know you i mean we want to be able to utilize the uh town hall for services and event space but you gotta uh be realistic that there's a cost associated with constructing and building this structure uh there's going to be uh utility costs there's going to be uh, 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 things of upkeep and, and to, to keep a structure like this uh, uh, and bring it first back to life, but then we will have a debt service that would have to be serviced. We would have to be able to pay people in order to uh, 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 manage it and to also to uh, have the upkeep and things of that nature. So, so, so you have to have some way uh, to uh, be able to uh, bring in um, uh, uh, um, resources, financial resources in order to keep this structure a viable and, and also a long-standing structure for, for years to come in the community. Okay. Um, will this development project assure construction and for permanent jobs, uh, or excuse me, will this development project assure construction and permanent operations jobs to local residents? Mm -hmm. This is uh, n number 12, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. The development will provide jobs, contracts to contractors, and permanent jobs and procurement opportunities for all local residents. So, of course, definitely development uh, uh, of the construction of the rehab of the, you know, which is the first phase of the rehab, there would definitely be opportunities. There would definitely be uh, uh, job opportunities for local residents that uh, uh, that I'm sure will come from the councilwoman's office, uh, the state rep's office, the state senator's office, and then also from the community that we will work with and those local RCOs that we will be that, uh, 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 that we will be, be talking to. But we don't stop there. We will also uh, uh, look for. Uh, those contractors, those local contractors uh, that are from the community that are looking for contracts to to actually do contracting work uh, uh, on this construction job as well. And then also, uh, 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 you know, if all goes well and we're doing well and it's a, it's a successful development project, then we will uh, uh, be um, also procuring uh, goods and services in order to uh, um, uh, keep that building up and to buy things that uh, that uh, that that structure is, is going to need in order to operate so there will be procurement opp opportunities for different businesses to provide those goods and services that will be needed and we will be looking to also do that with for uh, uh, and be able to make those purchases from those local businesses and those local residents as well. Okay, thank you. 
Um, question 13 is, will the apartment project include 10% affordable housing units? Uh, 50%. You said 50% affordable. 50% affordable and 50% market rate. Okay, very good. Could the historic building house something other than apartments? Germantown is inundated with new apartment buildings. Well, um, the historical building in our plan will be a mixed use building, which means it's going to be a restaurant is what we think that we can do there. A roof deck, office space, community space, event space, Airbnb space, community virtual services, tourists, uh, 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 visiting space, uh, to the bell tower, et cetera. So it's just not just a residential space that, uh, that, uh, that we are looking to do, uh, but we're looking uh, uh, to be um, uh, convert this uh, awesome structure into a mixed use type of uh, building. Okay, very good, very good. Um, we have little family entertainment in the neighborhood. I would like to see the town hall used as a family entertainment center, batting and golf cages, arcades, small movie theaters, et cetera. Um, and there wasn't a question, but I'm just assuming that they wanted to know your thoughts on that. We will always be looking at ways to have family neighborhood entertainment. So we would definitely be open and looking for, you know, you know, that kind of, uh, forward thinking and see how we can incorporate. We want the family to, 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 to want to come to the town hall, uh, uh day in and day out. So we would definitely be looking for, uh, uh, that kind of conversation of how we get that done. Okay. Um, number 16, I think has really been answered in the presentation. The question is, where is the 39 unit apartment building going to be built with a police station directly behind city hall? And, um, I know you, you know, in your presentation, there was a diagram. Yes. Of what the layout was going to be. So I'm assuming that answers that question, but if you want to elaborate on that at all. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, answered it in another question and said that there were three options uh, as it relates to uh, um, the um, police station uh, that we would uh, try to, as we, um, um, as we rehab and bring uh, the town hall back uh, up to a mixed use type of building, we would, you know, see option to see if the police station could be, uh, uh, um, uh, made a part of that uh, vision to have them operate within the town hall or either find them a new location in you know within the proximity that makes sense for them because it is a small police station it's very uh, 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 antiquated and then you know and then also to see at you know you know our last resort to see how we could coexist with them uh, with the new development. And I said that it will be a podium bill so that, you know, so, you know, so, so that there will be adequate parking for everybody. Excellent. Excellent. Um, will police services be disrupted during construction? No, by not, by no means would, uh, uh, I'm sure that we would have to coordinate with, with the police station and their services and their egress in and out 24 hours a day. And uh, uh, as if we would have to do with, you know, doing construction uh, on Germantown Avenue with the buses or the trolley cars and things of that nature, we would be, uh, um, you know, um, um, operating, you know, uh, uh, under their direction of, you know, how do we keep that egress uh, for their operations and for them to go in and out 24 hours a day. Okay. Um... What is your setback off the backyards along the houses facing Harvey Street? So, um, you know, what, what's the setback going to be? Well, you know, Darren and uh, Nana, I don't know if uh, that's, I don't, I don't know if you guys see that, but I don't see this impacting Harvey Street at all. Uh, Harvey Street is, what is that? Mm -hmm. That's going, that's going. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, yeah. I, maybe they meant, um, Haynes. Haynes Street. Maybe they meant Haynes Street, but it says Harvey Street, but maybe they meant Haynes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So so I think there is a setback, and I want to say about, what, five feet off the curb? 
or maybe eight feet off of Haines Street. There. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, I remember us talking about that. Did, yeah, off on on the first floor, we're aligning with the uh, the face of the the town hall along Hain Street, uh, and then the upper floors we we do uh, step out in this proposal. Okay, and that's about what. So that's about what th three feet off the curb, and it, it stayed. What or what is that? Or now, that might be about eight feet off the curb going the face of the building of the existing building right um right. nana do you know that dimension uh not off the top of my head well we'll get back to that yeah, about we'll, right. yeah i mean it's between six to eight feet off of the curb Wherever the line of the building of the existing building is, is where the new structure would be, and and on on that same line, it wouldn't and it would not encroach onto the curb. It wouldn't go right beside the street, if that's what they are asking. But they say in backyard. And yeah, yeah. The the question's a little um, confusing. Yeah. I yeah so but whoever submitted the question if you are on uh we would ask that you would resubmit that maybe um i'm assuming you meant um hang street not harvey street uh but if you could check that excuse me if you could check that and um you know resubmit the question we'd be happy to submit it to anthony um the next question what is your contingency to make sure there is no hazardous material spilled on the ground from the fuel tank servicing the police station. So um, that's, I, I assume that that's the, you know, fueling station there at the police station that they're referring to. Uh, well, I mean, uh, to remove the police stations, um, you know, if we was demoing that police station, uh, mm -hmm. all of that would be handled by remediation of soil and the tank and will be removed per uh, the uh, procedures and soil testing of engineering firms, uh, uh, geotech environmental firms that we would um, uh, that we would contract to. So you know you know all of that, any construction and even um, existing construction sometimes uh, to a structure like this, they may require, uh, testings uh, uh, um, uh, uh, of, of all soil to show that there is no uh, carcinogens and all of that kind of stuff that have uh, went down deep into the soils. But uh, but that's a requirement, excuse me, uh -huh. uh, for us before any construction can happen. That's a requirement to even you know go through uh, building building permits and all of the things that you would need in order to. Uh, uh, get through your submissions through L and I, uh, and and uh, and the streets and the water department, et cetera. Okay, all right. Uh, will this project be union labor? Um, this project uh, would probably fall under the prevailing wage guidelines, which is comparable to union wages. Okay. Which local contractors from the 19144 zip code are you hiring? Well, I mean, again, we will be reaching out to the councilwoman's office for local contractors that they have on their list. We will be reaching out to the RCOs. We'll be reaching out to the uh, uh, state reps office. We'll be reaching out to the state senator's office that fall into those zip codes to ensure that we, you know, uh, have those local contractors that are ready and willing and able to work on a project of this size and even if they're not uh uh you know uh you know able to you know do uh any large capacity work we will be able to sit down with them and work them in some way somehow in order for them to be a part of this project okay um can we see revenue projections from the 39 unit rental property that show the income needed to also properly restore the town hall 
is this quote unquote thoughtful gentrification? Hmm. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know about gentrification uh, because I'm still able to live here. So, <laughs> so if it was gentrified, I, I would have to move. <laughs> right. But but the thing is, is that uh, uh, that is like the next steps uh, as we move forward through our PIDC process. If we are so chosen to be the developing team, not Anthony Fullard, West Powelton solely by themselves, as you know, you know, you know, as this minority uh, local black firm, no, will not be undertaking this huge project. He has a team, and uh, uh, and you know, and we are trying to attract those dollars to this project uh, in order for us to be a part of this development. In, uh, in order for this to happen. Once, you know, those are selected and we can begin to uh, be confident that we have uh, uh, been given the green light to go to the next step uh, with, with PIDC as the chosen developer, then yes, we will be able to divulge more information. We'll be able to do uh, more uh, uh, um, uh, uh, PowerPoint presentations. We are able to uh, be able to talk about, you know, the the uh, the rentals, uh, um, um, price points, and all those types of things. Uh, but right now, you know, everything is just projectable uh, based on what we think that you know would make sense uh, for us to present to PIDC. Okay. Um, let me see. I think uh, that was the last question. Although. I did get a question in um, that uh, I'm going to read as it was presented. Um, okay, I am very concerned about the competence to do the job. By now, after a year, Full Art should have some estimate of the cost to rehab Town Hall. Could you please ask them to answer that question? How much will town hall cost to rehab? He cannot seek financing, tax credit, or public financing without knowing the costs. So I don't know if you want to uh, answer that one. Well, I mean, we have projections, okay? Okay. And our projections of, now this is just the only the interior and some of the exterior. So, you know, so we're around between, you know, 10 to $12 million uh, um, of, what we, of what we are projecting. But again, we're still going through our engin engineering, you know, uh, research and, you know, you know and, the, and, and, and once we get those, uh, um, that information back, uh, then we can, you know, uh, you know, begin to drill down on the um, cost that we would need. But if she, I mean, but if they're looking for a projectable number, you know what I mean? We easily around a 10 to $12 million number. Okay. Number. <laughs> okay. Um, and you know what? And I do want to go back and just clarify the question because I'm rereading it now with my, with my glasses on. And it says, I'm very concerned about the competence to do the job, whoever it is. So I don't, so I'm just rereading it. And it sounds as if that wasn't directed necessarily to you, but to whomever uh, is doing the job, that there was a concern about that, you know, they would, would have the capability to do the job. So I mean, I just it's a complex to, job. I mean, that's, I think that's yeah. a valid question. I mean, it is, yeah. it, ain't a, it, it, it is a very complex project is nothing that you want to you know just you know run and run in and out of there you know what i mean you correct know, it is a very detailed tedious and also complex project okay very good thank you for your answers and that being said that those are all of the questions that were submitted and coincidentally we're exactly uh at the end of our zoom ah, awesome. so we uh, started on time we ended on time and I want to thank Anthony Fullard for answering all the questions. Uh, again, uh, for all of those who are on board, Anthony, or on the call, Anthony did commit to coming back um, in uh, March and um, uh, answering any additional questions <laughs> people may have. And so, uh, you know, we are uh, thankful for that. And um, we will follow up.